Uh, welcome to The Downside. Uh, my name is Marco Sarezi. I'm here with Russell Daniels, my co-host. Hello, Russell. Hi. You better take a sip, right? It's like you introduced you. And we're here today with stand-up comedian, podcaster, uh, writer, everything, Ashley Gavin. Welcome to The Downside. Thank you for having me. Yay, Simone Biles. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. You had a skeptical look on your face. I'm wondering if I should drill cameras into my walls. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, you are you gonna use, you're going to use this whole podcast to make decisions about your own <laughs> podcast. Your podcast is doing great. I took lessons I know, from you. I do like to not learn. Not the other though. way around. I, I do like to learn. Yeah, these cameras. Yeah, my wall's fucked up, though. I, this one's about to fall out. I just noticed just now. I was thinking if I could do it with a command strip situation. Yeah, I hired someone. I don't even know what a strip Oh, no, I'm a lesbian. I'm going to do it myself. Good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, would um, good. Well, Ashley, we're going to get to you in a second. Uh, but uh, this has been, I will admit, off-brand, in a decent mood today. Yeah, you're, I, you're filming your Comedy Central special. Fil- uh, yeah, it's a set. A lot set. of people have been bringing me up. Specials are getting smaller and smaller. You call it a special, honey. Yes. Call it a... I can't, do. People are bringing they me have on stage. It's an eight-minute special. It's an eight-minute eight special. Yeah. <laughs> Hari Kondabolo, who I don't really know that well. I booked him on a show once. He messaged me. He's like, congrats on your Comedy Central half hour. And I, I didn't okay. have to follow up. No, I wrote back. I said, I said, oh, it's just a regular set, but I am thrilled. And then he didn't write back. And I wonder if he was like, oh, never mind. Until no. it's a half hour, I'm not messaging. <laughs> Good luck to anybody. People were very sweet. People have been very nice to me this week. Some I'm skeptical of. Some felt sincere. They're all. You should be skeptical of every Name single one, including names. mine. Gabe Pacheco says something very sweet. Like Gabe, like like gave like a a long like. And you know, I try. I looked him in the eye, and I try to take it in. I try to feel, and then I go, no, no soul in me, just 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 ambition, pure drive. But uh, I, I the best I felt. And tonight, hopefully, will feel good. But the best I felt, I was so anxious uh, the day before, the yesterday, I got a COVID test before. They tested you at the knitting factory. And I was so scared. Mm. I don't have any symptoms. Mm. But I, right. I went to L.A. when yes. the cases were rising. And I was like, I, I, so I go in and it's it's the rapid test. So you're like, okay, it's also like it's not the most accurate test. I don't think it count. I don't think they know about Delta on the rapid. Let's hope. Because and I, I was hoping for a second, I was hoping they were going to do self-administered. And I was, you know, I was going to work the, the rim of the nose, maybe the ear. Sure, always yeah. work the rim. Yeah. Listener, work the rim. Great advice. But here's my thinking. I got the test and you have to wait 15 minutes outside. And they had food there. They had food and they said you could take food. And I fucking took all the breakfast food I could. Because mm. in my mind, I was like, if... <laughs> if I, oh, if my yeah. dreams if I get COVID, crushed at least I got and I have this. COVID, at least I got a free breakfast out of this whole ordeal. And they'd never rebook you. I just want the listener to know they would never rebook you. You really think that? Not even out of spite or anger. It would have nothing to do with you. The kid that booked you this year would leave for a production Company Comedy that's Central gonna go, go under. Who Comedy knows? Central's going under. Yeah. Definitely going under. Sorry, John like, Marco, we're only doing animated. We're only doing animated stand-up yeah. sets for now. On. Only animated reboots of <laughs> TV shows from 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you'd never. Absolutely, that's how this industry works. Uh, I'm so glad we're having this conversation now because, like, I was I was asking Tova. I was like, I was like, if I have COVID, like, they'll rebook me eventually. And she's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no oh way. God, so, I have had multiple gigs canceled. Multiple like. TV things that I've lost and I never, I've never been. Re-booked. What was the one that wow. hurt the most? Kimmel. Oh. oh my God. When was this? This one's kind of 50, 50, but it was a few years ago. I was on the short list and then they just canceled stand up on Kimmel for like a year or two. You might remember this period of time. Where I, re- they- I remember this. Did they cancel it? Cause they didn't like how it was going. Yeah. They just like, were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to stop for two years. And then everyone who was about to do it, fuck them. So that was rough. It's weird. Maybe bleep Kimmel, but. I don't. Uh, no, yeah. please. Uh, I take so much time. Uh, Martin, <laughs> <laughs> there's something. No, there's please. That would inconvenience. There's sometimes I'm like, well, this could hurt my career a little, but bleeping it on the video and the audio. Fuck me. <laughs> um, I remember Martin Urbano had one of, I mean, one of the, one of, well, I think one of the great stand-up sets. Awesome. One of the yeah, great late night set, sets was on, set. was on Kimmel. Uh, it's, it, you know, uh, I shouldn't say. It. I saw Jay Leno. I was in L.A. and I ended up being like in a green room with Jay Leno. His kibble set was amazing. His kibble set was incredible. 
But just funny because like I don't think these late night shows they don't have to do stand up. Period. They don't. No, they have don't. to do it. There's no demand. And it's really but, bad. Like Martin was great, but the sets are not good compared to when you go see live comedy. Like yeah, the, I, in my opinion, late night sets are like. I think no I think fun. James Corden has some of the best sets out there. It just depends on whoever's booking, whoever is editing, whoever is choosing. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, I mean, I always have on the mindset if you told me if I wasn't in the business, I didn't care who I pissed off. I could choose people who would give great late night sets, but it has to be so clean. And eh. Pete Lee is the only one that I've ever watched. And I'm like, I like him as much. And I'm not shitting on other standups. I love the other standups. I think they're amazing. But Pete Lee is the only one where I'm like watching here, watching live, watching a special. I'm like, all of these are like equal caliber. Yeah. I think it's tough. And it also the audiences can be bad. It's Conan O'Brien, there's some stand-up sets on Conan O'Brien where the audience fucking sucked. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. what? This is supposed to be the show. Um, so I'm I got to regret test. this. So you saw Jay Leno. Oh. Yeah, I saw Jay Leno. <laughs> I, I don't wanna I don't want to speak out of turn, but it was no, no, very no. it was very cool to talk with, yeah. with Jay. He was very it's very interesting. He talked. He talks in a way where, like, clearly, like he thinks about money, <laughs> in, in but like in a in a way that like a a a mid level stand up comedian thinks about money. And I'm like, you have six hundred million dollars. Scarcity mindset, hard to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, it's it was very funny. He was just talking about going on tour. I asked him, I was like, why haven't you done like a Netflix or a, or a, to a uh, you know Some an sort, album? Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, because I can make more money touring. You know, I, I go, I had no, I haven't been in Pittsburgh in four years. I go there. They think all my material's new. They just fucking forgot. He's right. Yeah. Touring is way more lucrative. Was that a good Jay Leno? That was a really good Jay Thank I'm you. I'm so sorry. John Marco, that was an it incredible was like, wow. Jay Leno. I feel it like was, it's, it's uh, that was okay. That's a new it voice. Okay. It was okay. That's yeah. a new voice for me. That is not a voice I've heard come out of you. <laughs> yes. Um, but he, he was, he was very kind, very gracious. Uh, so then I, I got this test. I was sitting outside and I was just sitting outside. I, I was kind of waiting to see if any comics got the no, got that you have COVID. <laughs> so I was just, you know, like, ooh, maybe, maybe I will get bumped up to a half hour. And then there's a bunch of comics, comics get knocked open out. Open micers are hanging out waiting to see if someone has to bail from the, and they're like, I'm, I'm here. I don't have COVID. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Can you put me in? Yeah. That, if someone should have waited. That would have been good. But I don't think anyone got it. Which, they, that's why it just makes me skeptical, because I hear about them doing this for all these film sets, and you know that they don't want anyone to have COVID, because if they if someone has COVID, they might have to shut down the whole fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, I just imagine, if you if we found out that they got the cheapest test for all these Hollywood productions, because they should all be shut down. I mean, you keep hearing about these cases going up, and I'm like, but I don't hear about Hollywood productions mm -hmm. getting shut down very frequently. Something Something's mixed. But uh, Comedy Central, you did your due diligence. Viacom, I love you. I'm gonna totally trustworthy. Party. Viacom, I love Viacom, you. Viacom, I love you so And everyone much. that I just shat on, which I think is literally every network. I literally <laughs> shit on every you also said, you network. Said I liked, you, liked, you said you liked one stand-up comedian's yep. late night set. The rest of them totally throwing shit. hundreds of people under the bus. There's just... Look, I no, just it's don't, a weird. It's a I don't weird like setting. the. It's not the comedians. It's the environment. Yeah. And uh, I don't... They're never going to book me, so I'm just... That's not true. No, they're not. Not until I'm mega. I have totally resolved this in my mind that I, I have think, to do it totally myself for the next two or three years, and then they're all going to be like, fun, uh, but sure. like, because it's starting to happen. But like, I'm. It's really got to be all the you, way. You just did a a self produced, self driven tour of the country. You're someone. I mean, I've been telling people that like the mentality I try to take on now is that I will never have any industry success. Mm -hmm. And obviously now I'm having tons, but my mindset <laughs> is I'm not going to have any yeah. and just proceed like that. Yeah. And that's that started the with it. the outdoor special, but I, I cite, I frequently cite you and, you know, Norman and people who are kind of doing oh, wow. their own thing, of course. Um, but, but, uh, but, but this is the downside. So we shouldn't get too positive. Tell no, me about. No, it fucking sucks. I hate that I have to do it all myself. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Yeah. It's a lot of work. A it's lot a lot of work, work and I'm better than everybody. And what the, <laughs> what the fuck? That but, they're negative enough for you? Yeah. But you get to be a little, you get to be a little free. You get to kind of do whatever it is you want to do. That's true. Um. So so let's let's talk about the tour. You just got back. Did you call it something? This tour? So uh, I I've been calling it. <laughs> it has two names. I call it the backyard tour for short when I'm talking to people because it says what it is. But I've also been calling it on the tickets and to my gross fans. Uh, Ashley Gavin live in your bush. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's great. Live in your bush. Did you do you have merch for that? We made pins, but I never got them manufactured. Like I I paid <laughs> I paid a kid. Allie, shout out Allie. I paid a kid a hundred dollars <laughs> to make a 
really cool pin of like a bush like an, an arm sticking out with a microphone use it, and a little use it again and make you make a lot of money i, I, I know, realize i know i he's think a, a merch lot of these king this guy. these tour names i saw tom segura is doing a tour called like i'm coming everywhere uh, <laughs> that's great and yeah and I, and I realized part of me was like oh i hate i hate tour names in general but then i was like me too. oh it's a merch it's excuse. a merch excuse yeah and <laughs> i think that's a great name. fans we're, we're we hate it we but we know that you'll lap it up you little bitches it's lap embarrassing. it up yeah. i mean i just ordered i don't know if you saw on the way in i have about 600 moisture crunchy towels and oh, God. it's based off a Isn't bit i awful? do it's a bit i do but i sell them for ten dollars and i make I almost, you know, some of these weekends pay horribly and I get 600 extra dollars off a weekend selling it's these It's just towels. another, th when you do everything yourself, it's just another thing I have to do. Yeah. So you when have to I, carry those You everywhere. have to carry them. Yeah, but that's easier than shirts. I mean, shirts yeah, is this true. thing. Shirts is stupid. I see people with shirts all, and they're like, oh, I don't have a medium. Do you want extra, extra, extra large? And they're like, no. Exactly. Yeah. Pins are great, especially because I'm, get, this, see, I'm so stupid for not doing it because pins are, it's one size. They're all the same. They're light, easy to carry. Gay people fucking love pins. There you go. There you and go. And I won't make them. I'm holding myself back. Make them. I gotta make, make the pins. All right, I'm gonna make the oh, fucking pins. I mean, I just remember the first time I, I featured at a comedy club in South Carolina, and the pay was so shitty. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I have to do merch, or I will just, I will lose money on everything I do. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell me the downsides of of doing a tour on your own. It's exhausting. Yeah. You're like running around the entire time. Um, like I literally bring the speaker, the lights, all of the camera equipment. I've got it like down to like such a light rig, but you're still like running through the airport with like just the absolute biggest suitcase in history. And yeah. you have to check it. And then you, you've, you know, like you're getting everywhere early. You're setting up your, uh, you are ushering people in at your own tour. Like Word. I've had shows where people are like, aren't you? Aren't you Sound. Ashley Kevin? And I'm and I'm like, yup. And we have two seats right up front. Can't wait to start the show. And it takes away from the magic. Yeah. yeah. And and the value of the ticket, unless the fan, unless the person coming to see you really understands who you are, then it adds value. Then they're like, yeah, Ashley does literally everything herself. Like do this you, is part of it. Are you in your? I know you don't do a character on stage, but we all have our persona. Are you doing it? No, I with have that my energy? hat on front and low. Like I'm almost like trying to like I'm like Leonardo DiCaprio ushering people. I'm like, please don't recognize me, but they're gonna they're gonna know it. But yeah. I'm trying to like be quiet and like not give them anything. That's what's so. That's the thing. One of the things about like merch after or before a show. It's, it's weird. like I you know I like to be mean on. I'm a little mean on stage, oh, I'm but a then. Cunt. But when they when it's merch, I go like, "Hi, how are you? And thank you so much for <laughs> yeah, coming." Yeah, yeah. And I wish I was cool. I wish I was like, "You have f fuck you." I don't know what I do, but but you know, I worked really hard on everything. I'm staying yes. on stage. I can't improvise that shit. Yes. Yeah. It's like they're gonna find out you're not as funny as they thought you were. Yeah. Because oh, some yeah. people who you know who don't watch a lot of stand up, they're like, "They're magic up there. They just think these things." And you're mm. like, "No, this is crafted. This mm -hmm. is scripted heavily." But uh, you tell me where'd you go loosely. Uh, I did uh, like 10 cities from Portland down to San Diego and then over to Phoenix. And then I did a Texas thing. Um, I did Austin and Dallas and I headlined Oklahoma City's Pride, which was really cool. Uh, that was not part of the backyard tour, but it was outside. Uh, was it hard to do a Pride? Is the energy? I just feel like a Pride show would be like everyone's just screaming and having fun. Dude, I followed 9,000 drag queens and it was a difficult transition. So there there were 10,000 <laughs> people at this. Oh thing. my God. 10,000. That's what they In said. In Oklahoma City. Yeah, there are that many gay people there. Isn't that wild? Wow. So That's all of them. <laughs> there's literally every, every gay person one. in Oklahoma. That, and at this particular Pride, there were a lot of young people. I mean, I saw 14, 15 year old, 16 year olds, one like 13 year old raised uh their hand in the middle of my set and goes i just and i was like yes because <laughs> i used to be a yeah. teacher i was like okay good, yeah. yes qu comment question and and they go you're my favorite tiktoker and i was like this is fucking weird like thank you but like this is bizarre like it's a comedy set but when i got up there after all the drag queens for the drag queens the children at pride are just fucking they love rupaul yeah they're losing their they don't minds. know about the fracking thing they don't know about the fracking 
Uh, we talk about this on my I podcast. I did so with you, the 13 year old, and you're like, oh, what's your favorite bit? The part about how I like fingering women on their period? Yes. Like, is that your favorite TikTok of mine? I, right, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, you shouldn't be watching this. But they're here and they, they're they fans. And I love that they are. And frankly, I'd rather them from me than like from porn. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So Those are I the think only that's two difficult. options. I, <laughs> I mean, they're getting the porn too. Yeah. I think it's so difficult with fans. Like I subscribe to your newsletter too. And it's, oh my God. But it's partly, kill myself. but again, it's partly more, I mean, it's, it's me like being like, okay, cool. What are other comics who are mm. doing their own thing? And it's like with these fans, and I sometimes when I write my Patreon messages, there's this mix of me like being like cynical and and be also being like, thank you for continuing to subscribe. Yeah, I need I mean, this I'm so badly. So grateful, but I am dissociated <laughs> yeah. because I don't feel that I deserve any of it. Like a, like mm. an actual, an actual someone who is like, I love your writing or I love this element. Like talks to me on a craft level. But someone who's just like, I'm a big fan of your TikToks. I'm like, I don't know how to talk to you. Yeah. Like, this yeah. feels like, because I'm not a fan of anybody. Like, I appreciate people's craft, but I'm not like a fan. Yeah. Maybe Taylor Swift. Oh, That's, yeah. We all yeah. have our, yeah. but, no comics. Like, for no. me, like. I feel like it's easier to do if it's a different thing, too. It's like, much you're easier. like, you're like, with comedy, you're like, oh, I understand. Like, you can appreciate and really be able to bling. But fanning over it feels little strange because it's what you do so you're like you and know. i'm not shitting on anybody that you're a fan of someone's work you are probably a more normal person than i am you probably are not as screwed up as i am that i because i when you're trying to like make it in this industry you have to protect yourself and put up certain like prot you know mechanic guardrails and mechanisms you're probably just a normal person with a great <laughs> psyche well, and also yeah. you are your podcast is called uh, the Let's. What is it? Gay sex. Let's talk about gay sex. Let's have gay I sex. I kind of want to watch you just, just figure it out. Yeah, keep naming gay things. sex because you have to have gay sex to listen. Something happens when comedians, particularly like straight male comedians, are trying to say the name of my podcast. They literally can't do it. They can't. They can't figure it out. They lose their minds. I have it here. Gay sex. Gay sex. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex. That's pretty close. Is that hard for you to say? No. <laughs> I. I'm all about it. I, I'm joking around. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. I already, I, I know my story. If you ever have me on, I already Are know my gay? story. Like, no. Oh, um, I thought you were gay. Uh, uh, I, really? I have a feminine vibe to me. I love um, it. Yeah. Uh, I was like, we're on this team over here. <laughs> um, no, I've gotten that before. I, Which is I, weird because you're fucking gay. Yeah. I mean, John Marco, I think is In certain ways, but in, in certain other ways, ways, quite straight. The In the sex way, you're straight, but in all the other ways, you're gay. Not all the other ways. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm a mess. I and mean, if we're talking about That's, stereotypes, okay, okay. we're talking about broad no, stereotypes. No, 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 the other way. Clothes. I wear. I wear cargo shorts. I still have them. If I didn't have a girlfriend, the moment Tova's gone, those cargo shorts are going back on. I already got a job. Yeah. Wow, she's training you. That's good. She is. She's. I mean, these sandals are because of her. There's a. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. I things. love women. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, uh, I do. But I was saying, you. when you you because it's because it's about being gay, and you talk about like this 13 year old fan of pride, you probably get messages from people. I got one or two that are like, "You help with my mental health," and I'm like, "Oh, please seek a professional because yeah. I'm just trying to be funny." You feel anxiety, you feel a, a, a weight, and I can imagine every, being a, a gay comedian. Day. There's so yeah. many yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. people and in tough situations. Yeah, really tough. Like there there are several categories, but like women with children leaving their husbands that's a category i get that message like once a month hey i'm i'm been married for this long i have this many kids i'm getting divorced i'm gay i'm coming out like you hear no matter how many times you hear that you're like holy shit like i'm so happy for you but i should have nothing to do with this yeah, <laughs> yeah. but and to say that if you are listening and that is your story i'm so glad to be a part of your story i'm just joking but the weight of it is in, to think of this because I can't help it I literally picture this person telling their husband and their family that they're gay I can't not think about it and and I, it's so emotionally overwhelming to think about that and then children you know 15 yeah. 16 17 year old kids homophobic towns homophobic parents I picture them I picture them their parents finding out about the podcast seeing it on their phone I like it coming on in the car like I can't I do all the gay I have I'm reliving gay trauma like like you know what i mean yeah um yeah. it's like really intense but also thank you for listening to my podcast 
exist. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I, I was so curious. You talked about where you did this cruise line, but you weren't allowed to talk about being gay. On the, the PG shows, yeah. On the PG shows, yeah. which is incredible. Now, you, this, you were the first openly, first openly gay, yeah. On, on what cruise line was this? Um, I'm not going to name the cruise line, even cool. though I constantly do it and it's everywhere. But I'm going <laughs> to, you know what? I'm going to try right. to start avoiding it. It's yeah. a budget cruise line. You definitely know which cruise line it is. Yeah, when yeah. you say budget, you mean a cheap? Cheap as fuck. Ooh. I'm talking like you should be really, if you knew how much, you can get a $120 like three or four day cruise from this cruise line. And you're like, how do they do that? Bad, you're like, don't you like don't want to fucking know. Uh, you don't yeah, want to yeah. know. No way what, that food is good. No, toxic waste and working people like you own them in the middle of the ocean because of international water laws. Like really fucked up shit. But you Thanks were the, for hiring how me. Long was, how long did you do that for? Um, they Comics get treated well. On uh-huh. these things, they're not like other um, people who work on the cruise that yeah. have to be on there for really long contracts. Right. We're only out there for a couple of days. Oh. And sometimes you'll do them back to back. So, you know, I was on a boat. You might be on a boat for two weeks if you're really going hard on a particular They scheduled that way. But a lot of times you'll be on this boat for like five days and then you'll be on another boat. Oh, that's you know for pretty however. Good. Yeah, it's, re- it's actually people shit on cruise comedy and they should because a lot of it is really bad. But there are also really good comics who this is a huge part of their living and they're still trying to make it and they're still trying to like get a late night set or whatever some of them have late night sets and like mm, yeah they use this just to like pay their rent and yeah i think it's a scary i always get scared of even if i got a cruise which i, I could use the money it'd be great, great but money. there's a feeling of like oh i won't be around in case something pops up that's just always the For thing sure. in your head yeah. or you go away you come back in six months you don't recognize any of the comics on the lineup yeah all your friends moved to la yeah, like, yeah. This that, is i did them for that reason during december i like ah. did like three weeks back to back i did christmas i did new year's i did thanksgiving Ooh. like when a lot of things weren't like really happening so, so was, yeah. yeah you got booked and you're the first openly gay comedian on this cruise line yes and what do they tell? How do they phrase it to you about these PG shows? Um, first of all, they told me, I was like, this is an R. They rate all your shows. And I was like, this is an R-rated show. And, he, and the dude that I was working with, he was like, we're going to make it X-rated just in case. Because my sex stuff yeah. is more sex sexual than like a straight dude's sex stuff. That's like implicitly how I read it as a gay person. Like just by virtue of being gay. Be, just being gay is R. Is R. Like that's yeah. just wild. Um, but like I have a girlfriend like me saying I have a girlfriend that's R rated like that's literally what that means but yeah. sorry oh no X rated feels like it implies there will be nudity like you're right. like like yeah, yeah. X yeah, rated to me like, would be you're, like you're not, and then I jam my words. fist up or, it would be like a fist in a pussy no, but like you have, have, have to see it it would be though. about the depth you're like, going inside someone yeah. R to X no but There's you're definitely, never describing it, you, you know I definitely have one show that you could argue is X rated but I have another show that's Actually, one of my R-rated shows is actually quite clean for an R-rated show because I had to put all of my clean gay material in that show. Yeah. Because it can't go in the clean show. So I have clean gay material in the R-rated show. It's it's crazy. And but explicitly they said PG. Yeah. No. They were like, you can't. I think they phrased it in other stuff. They were like, no drugs, no gay. They said no gay. No, no gay. gay. You can't. <sighs> I don't think they said race, but they might have also lumped race into that category. Um, what does that mean? No race. No like, sex, obviously. Like no race talk. Like, oh, oh, like I imagine that's for the black comedians who can't be too black on the beach PG show. Um, no black. I mean, I I haven't asked them that, but I I have a friend. I could text him and could be like, hey, do you do you get to be black on the PG show or oh my do you God. just stand there? Like, do you just, I keep the lighting very low. Yeah, um, yeah. They have like was that t- you do an hour, half hour. Okay, half yeah. hour is manageable. Hour with like without any of that, it just is tough. It's really tough because at least when you're straight, you can do my girlfriend, my wife. Like I'm literally dancing around the pronouns, and I just I feel such a revulsion. I have one joke that I was like, I'm just gonna switch the pronouns today because this is a good clean joke, and I like it, and it'll work well at the PG show. And I've slipped up. I one time I slipped up and said she by mistake. But I and the, uh, the audience grabbing their children. Oh my god! No one. We didn't even, know this was an X-rated. Was yeah. <laughs> no one even fucking. Right. I'm sure some people clocked it. I'm sure the really weird homophobic people were just like, "I'm gonna ignore that," because <laughs> yeah. that's a, you know, a lot how a lot of people handle that stuff. But um, yeah, I couldn't. 
I can, for money, I will do pretty much anything, but I couldn't bring myself around to really use they non-gendered pronouns during the set because it reminded me of like being in the closet, the way that I used to have to talk to people at work, like very carefully, you know, you could just straight up lie and be like, my boyfriend this, my boyfriend that, but that feels gross too. It's like when I watch, yeah. it's very funny to watch uh, some of Ellen DeGeneres' first specials and she's talking about dating men and how much she hates it. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, you're getting close, you're getting close. <laughs> but she's like, she's on stage wearing like an extra but, large suit. Yeah. <laughs> talking about dating girlfriend. men. Yeah. She had a serious girlfriend. Like, it's just like, so sad. Ellen, I got some, I got some hate online because uh, I said Ellen DeGeneres is vegan, and I said that should give her a little wiggle room of being an <laughs> asshole. And I think but I'm not saying I'm not, not saying she should be an did asshole. Not like that. Some people were very upset she about it. Not they they were they were like room. she treats her staff worse than cattle, and I was like yeah, but she treats her staff better than we treat cattle. So. <laughs> But people were not having it. People, people, like people have labeled use, her as a as a the bad person. It's just so upsetting to them because she's gay and was like such a beacon of like night like she's con- like that was her whole brand was like being kind. So I think that's like a ups the level of backlash in response to her being a total asshole. Do you have an emotional like respect for her given like what she? I mean, what it's she re- did is astounding. It's really unfortunate how much um, respect I have. It's for okay her. though. Not th- th- these people don't have to be perfect. We can still say like, wow, that's incredible. If- I'm feels- I'm deeply disappointed. Like when I heard about all this stuff, I was like, "Fuck, man! Like, come on! Like, you're like my hero. Mm. You know? Like, come on! You're so many people's heroes. Hero. It just sucks that like she's clearly got some major major issues at the bare minimum and is like unethical as an employer. On the other, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I do. She went through. I mean, she did it like all for us. She came out, she felt the backlash. And then when America came around, she was like willing, she was mentally able to forgive and like move forward. That's incredible. And furthermore, excellent comedian. Yes. I mean, Ellen was an excellent comedian. Some of those stand-up specials, a lot of people do. I've seen a couple comedians that do bits that I'm like, oh, Ellen kind of already did this. Yeah. And I don't say anything because, you know, no one sees that HBO special that I'm watching. Yeah. uh, Or for her first 30 minutes on HBO. But she really, like, had her own own style, the way she did act-outs. She was astounding. She's, like, one of the greatest ever, period. And also an asshole. Yeah. And a gay icon. She is all of those things. (laughs) Tough, tough break. Um, so where'd you grow up? New York. I'm born and raised here. Born and raised. Where in New York? Yorkville, like up uh, between the Upper East Side and Harlem on the like East Side. And did you did you enjoy growing up there? I think so. You think so? I, I love New York. I will never leave here. Yeah? You really think so? You, yeah. I mean, you were, you were touring all mostly along the West Coast, You know right? what was cool? Phoenix was kind of cool. What was cool about Phoenix? I liked, like, it was just beautiful and it's the same every day. I kind of like that. I feel like sometimes I've gone on vacations like that. Cat and died. I feel like day five or six, like the people there really pride that the weather thing too. And they're like, isn't it great? It's like this every day. And I'm like, I have a hard time with that because I like, if I felt like every day was the same, I can't feel time. And I feel, it feels sad to me. Like, I'm like, every day is the same. And they're like, isn't it beautiful? It's this beautiful every day. And I'm like, well, find something else to fucking talk to me about. Like, because like, I, I, when, we, I, when I went on a, a trip with Nicole to this tropical thing, it was like, every day they'd be like, I bet you it's nicer here than it is in New York. And you're like, yeah, obviously. But I noticed the passing of time there. And it, I just, it's just something that bothers me. I understand. I like, went to Hawaii and I felt the same way after, like, the, at the end of the vacation, I was, like, ready to be done with the, this is years and years and years ago. Yeah. But, I'm going to Hawaii in November for a friend's wedding so oh, fun. I'm, I'm excited I yeah. got a gig finally I made sure it's not a pure vacation I go in for a friend's wedding oh you're you're doing a set at the I Ma- got, in Maui yeah uh, for, I got a, a headlining night at the the blue note uh November 3rd Hawaii Plug listeners it. please go I need to talk to you about clubs I'm I'm just been totally there's another one over here I've just been totally into uh indie so I haven't really been talking to clubs but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. maybe I will yeah, I mean, you have the the followers to to sell. I can't sell tickets. I can't sell shit. Gay people, <laughs> listener, 
you'll lap up all my shit. I know this. <laughs> you little gay freak. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm going to Honolulu for two days with Tova. Tova's going too. Uh, two days in Honolulu, then my friend's wedding. And he wants me. He wants me to uh, at the rehearsal dinner do like a performance. Don't do it. Oh, he already gave me some money, so I am doing it because uh, I cash. Is it like a roast? Uh, no. Well, here's he's like he wants me to uh, to do like he, everyone's gonna do toast, but he wants me to do a little longer. But her family, he's like uh, sh- they're Catholic. Um, they're all. They're both families are Asian. And she's super Catholic, and he's like PG. Don't offend do anyone. You your Asian stuff. Well, there's there's certainly a thing of like my my best friend in middle school was was Asian at a pretty Start much very that. non-diverse hey, high school, hey, middle school. So my like, best friend was Asian. I have a so... unique perspective. Uh, <laughs> but like, talked to him in but, years. You know, but there's certainly if the, if I'm the if I'm like the uh, oh the only white person in a predominantly Asian uh, wedding, I, well, there's going to be some kind of joke. There's going to be something to say. I'm not going to do an Asian accent. I'm not going to be hacky about Why it. Why not? But I'm going to want to. I'm going to want to. I'm going to want to make a joke about it and jokes about him. And it's they're Catholic, so oh, well, he's like he's like you can't offend the Catholics. It's got to be PG. And I'm like this is my so middle you have school to friend. Do Asian material. That's what he said to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how well do you know him? Uh. Like we were middle school, like best buds, and then so he is the middle school friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we stayed in touch forever. But again, to see each other, talk to each other. You know, two phone calls a year. Yeah. But kind of had like a deep, a deep bond of uh, like I want to talk about in the, whatever this thing is. We would like have sleepovers, and these were persons that would be like, "Hey, man, do you ever think about God?" And he'd be like, "Yeah." And that would be the end of the conversation. But it, like, it felt wow, like, man. wow, that was the first conversation I had about that stuff. Mm. You, know, we, we both like, we both. When you go, through, you go through puberty at the same time. He was someone. He was very popular. He was a soccer kid, very fit, six pack. And women would hit on him, and he like he was very aloof. He wasn't into it, and he'd tell me to like tell them I'm not interested. And then I would, and they'd wow. be like, Oh, you just want you Kevin really all to yourself. Bottom. I was, but that was the thing. We had a very we had a, uh, I think there was like a certain kind of crush, a, a heterosexual I was ask crush. You guys if you were jerking each other off at the sleepovers, no. Can we talk that about never this? <laughs> Is there any, any jerking off at? Because like you read in books, you read in fiction, like boys mm, having think... sleepovers, and then there's like a little, there's just like a hiccup in the book. Yeah. Like the book is like a coming of age book and there's like always one hand job. There's always one weird mm. gay hand job mm-hmm. in every mm-hmm. kind of coming of age story about men. And I'm like, when are the men going to tell me on the podcast that they've, that they've done this? Because I know what's happening and no one's told me yet. Do you ever have I've gone right to a bathroom during uh, uh, like a, those kind of sleepover and jerked off like when I was a child. Close. You know? <laughs> but like it was never like uh, there was never like a group thing but it is weird because sometimes you'd be like sometimes they're doing be, it under the sheets so like i would finger girls under you would watch the porn sheets. sometimes yeah. you know like as a group in your full like, porn well not like I remember, we watch swordfish it was like skinamax you know it was skinamax. like it was yeah. like it was like softcore stuff swordfish you know? I, I was watching i remember it's like my 13th birthday and halle berry she's suntanning and then she takes down her suntan thing and she's there and mm-hmm. she's i mean her and hugh jackman in that movie are the most beautiful people in the world and we would be like, oh, go back. And we'd look at it. And I'm sure we're all yeah. we're all hard, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. No, I like that you guys are making the effort. <laughs> no, I think. Like, the, okay, okay. How about this? How I, about this? How the about grossest this? thing I ever did, I when I first started jerking off, I mean, I, I was a, a, a floor humper, I guess I would call it. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if yeah. that's a technical I term. I love that. Yeah. I, it's, it's uh, finally left. You lay K. down on the floor and hump the floor? You'd hump the floor and you wouldn't get fully erect, but you'd still be, I would still be able to like climax. How old were you? Uh, yeah. Like 12, I'd say, 12, okay. 13. That's very similar to like the stuff that girls do that we don't talk about because mm. people want female masturbation to just be like... <laughs> But the difference is like you're strapping a dick to the wall and fucking it from, you know what I mean? That's what everyone wants it to be. But it's mostly humping. It's a I lot think of humping. The difference is though, is though, I would climax though. So there would be the, and you try to, this is intense. You would try to uh, position your penis that it would at least come and it would hit the boxers and not just the pants, in which case you would see, see uh, a mark. You'd see, you know, a so wetness. You're you going about your day. You're going about your day after pants. that. 
You were yeah. not going to change. You're not changing pants. You're, you're not changing pants. Because I'd like, be at a sleepover. So there would be oh, like, there was one oh, or two sorry, movies where you know, I'd be watching and I'd be on the floor. So oh, you're thinking my God, God, you're coming in front of your friends? You're humping that floor and coming in front of your friends. Men are amazing. <laughs> Men are, um, we treat them like shit now, but you guys actually deserve all the you things that you've accomplished. You are the floor. You're coming yeah. in front of your friends and then wow. inventing the airplane? That's funny is, unbelievable. I thought you were up in a room alone just humping the floor. You were so in If we're watching setting. a sexy movie and Halle like, Berry shows her tits, what are you going to do? You're in a sleeping bag, basically. You're on the, you're, everyone's got pillows, everyone's pajamas, you're all watching. God, I wonder how many of you are coming in this I scenario. Wonder, well, who knows? Do you know? But the, uh, no, I, I feel like I was probably... I probably had a problem. I was I was doing it a lot. No, no, no. I, I don't think that you don't judge yourself like that. I but, forgive you. But the thing is, like, in my mind, I was being like very surreptitious about it. I was like, just like kind of gently thrusting. Sure. But I bet if I could see outside view, it was clear that I'm just like fucking the ground. <laughs> So yeah. hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it's sort of I, like I, when you're I, masturbating at camp or at college and you're like, don't fucking deep sigh right now. Yeah. Do not deep sigh. But I'll go one further. Oh, no shaky breaths. My friend Kevin, who I, I'm going to try to talk about on the set, like we did this one. I had paintball guns. And in middle school, we we it was me, him, and two women from our class. And I played this. I said, let's play spin the CO2 bottle. Where like we would, that was the CO2 was for the paintball. And we spun it. And basically the girls said that they would kiss each other if Kevin and I would kiss each other. Nice. And we, we pecked. We gave each other a peck. I think that was my first kiss. Oh my god! And That's I'm gonna bring wow. that up at the wedding. We'll That's have you on the pod. Um, Thank you. I've had. I got another one where a guy you, sucked you're, my dick. You're just pitching yourself for my got a pod lot of, right now. I got a lot. I think I've had more gay sex than most of your guests. I don't know about that. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I did have a story about a sleepover at one time. I uh, we it was like we were young, but, but like must have been early high school. But we well, like we're, we had had drinks. And uh, we had like a C Cinemax softcore thing, and and some one of the guys had, had paused it on like a particularly lovely set of of breasts, mm -hmm. and but we were drinking like they paused it, and then we were all hanging out down in the basement, and um, I there was one bed down there, and I was going to stay down there, so I stayed down there, and we're just like you know we were drinking blah blah blah, and we fell asleep, so we fell asleep, thing was still paused, so in the <laughs> morning. His mom comes down to do, she's doing laundry and yeah. she's a pair of women's titties like paused <laughs> on the screen with me sleeping there. And, and I waked up and, and I didn't notice it at first. And she was like, good morning, Russell. And like, I was like, oh, hi. And then I, I was, it was so embarrassing. Like that's the just beginning of a good porn there. She's like, so you, you like tits? <laughs> You know, I have yeah. some tits. Would you Hello, like to see mine? Hello, stepson. I didn't know that you liked tits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hope I don't get stuck in this Are dryer. those lesbian porn is there as, as much mom stuff? There's a lot of mom, stepmom, friends True mom. True lesbian porn. Shout out Jelly-Filled Girls. They're great. Um, Jelly-Filled Girls. They're an actual lesbian couple. They keep their identities hidden. They like wear, you can't like, you can only see them like from kind of nose down. Oh. Um, uh, True lesbian porn? Nah. Not really. I'm not a big porn person, but. Really? Um, yeah. No. If we're going to go into porn, we're going to like go into a really super like uh it's going to get very listener, it's going to get very gay. Like my, my We've gotten very gay on this podcast. The way that I consume porn is like sort of like I, I I'm not dysphoric about like my body. Like I feel like I exist in the I feel very much a woman. I feel a good in my body, but I definitely have like a masculine energy that I find hard to find in lesbian porn. I see. And I also like love looking at women. I think I have the male gaze. I love looking at women, I think very similarly to the way men like looking at women in a sexual way. And I don't think that's true for all lesbians or queer people. And I just like think that straight porn is way more visually appealing than lesbian porn because actual good sex for a woman is not necessarily visually cinematically interesting mm. yeah mm -hmm. and i want the visual thing so i watch straight porn really yeah because like i can see like a woman's body like moving in a way that i really enjoy yeah, yeah. and when i watch like a lot of like my ex-girlfriend for example she like really watched like to watch like women fingering each other and i just get bored i'm like i know where the clit is i don't need this i yeah. can barely see anything 
Like I want boobies bouncing. Yeah. So like then I that's why I go to the straight porn. You don't have as much and there's strapping in some lesbian porn, strap ons, but a lot of people don't use strap ons and I don't use strap ons. And that actually makes me feel like weird. I don't like that. Mm. So I don't want to see it in my porn. Like I don't want to be I don't it makes me feel strange. Is strap ons more more niche? I, I don't like I have no idea what percentage. I wouldn't of- call them niche, but they're not nearly as common as people think. People think like Women improve. Men think lesbian sex is scissoring, and straight women think that lesbian sex is strap-ons, and it's really funny. Um, every woman is like so, like, like who, like, what, how big, what is, how, where do you, when you put it on, like, how long does it? And I'm yeah. like, I don't fucking have one. Yeah, but sometimes men think double-ended dildo. I get double-ended dildo a lot from men. I when I think about, it, I could just the the. The able to like both do it at the same yeah. time seems yeah. very problem. impossible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every everything that's not very basic sex wise, I'm like, oh, there's no way that's fun. Yeah, I remember, I just will always <laughs> always remember the first woman I had sex with being like, like let's try a wheelbarrow, and like, we, oh my god, you know, we get off the bed out of the floor, and I'm like holding her for three seconds. I'm like, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't hold you up anymore. The yeah. angle's terrible. This is awful. Yeah. Spooning too. I've always been too tall. Spooning never works. Oh, for me. I love spooning. Spooning in general. Spooning sex. Yeah, spooning sex. Spooning sex. It ends up just being oh, doggy you're so style tall. on its side. I really, I, yeah, I really like that. I think that's yeah. fun. With with with, but not with the with the strap on. No, so it's just very with different. my hand. With your hand. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think it's I I watched a little bit of your your very viral TED talk. Oh, I mean, maybe your most watched. I can't believe you Googled me this much. Of course. This is humiliating. He does the research. I hate talking about the TED Talk, but I said nothing was off the table. That's, so, that'd be funny. You're like, talk about my dad who died. No <laughs> TED Talk. That's humiliating. I hate the TED Talk. Uh, I always forget. So this is where our commercial will be. When we come back, we'll talk about the TED Talk. And we're here for the TED Talk. You're doing ads? Uh, there, whatever program. <laughs> so funny. That's great. It's I'm on my manager's network loosely. And oh, cool. So part ads, it's cool, but like I have never seen a check from these ads yet. So I imagine they're still waiting for it to round. I haven't up to gotten a my check either from my ads, and it's been a long time. What do you advertise for? Uh, Helix, all forms, some headphones. Um, it's just getting started. I just signed with my studio like a few. What studio? Seventy one studio. Congratulations. Congratulations! Thanks. It's yeah, it's cool. I yeah, like I, I do. You have to do straight copy reads. Do you get to have I fun with it? I write my own ads. Good. And That's I what I want to do. Those, I yeah. want it to be fun. I hate it when it's not fun. I I found a really fun rhythm with some some dark humor last week. Yeah. So I was like, "Are you?" I have my Helix mattress, which I actually do love, and I'm not doing a plug for a Helix mattress. Wouldn't that be so funny if they were like, "Actually, we need to get you on the downside, and you have to plug the Helix mattress." <laughs> But I have one, and I was like, uh, listener, are you up all night thinking about a former lover like I am? And I go into this whole breakup thing about my mattress. Oh, that's great. And I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do all of them that way. You should. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Tim Dillon always does great, like, ad reads. That's what he kind of, partly what his podcast was known for in the beginning. Oh. Uh, uh, and then I was listening, Anthony Chelsea, I guess, podcast that I, you know, I'm a big fan boy. Talk about, like, a bit of a crush. Uh, the, He's a cutie. He is. Uh, but he he said on some podcast that he does some ad reads where they get back and they're like, you have to redo it or this doesn't count because he fucked around with it too much or he had too much fun. Well, he probably forgets. The one thing they don't want you to forget is like the code. Do not forget the link. Do not yeah. forget the code. Yeah. You know, that's what they usually get mad at you about. I've done, I've been trying to do, I get weird free branded stuff for the, I'm sure you get lots of free shit for your Instagram following. I usually turn it down though because I, I do think that we should be paid. I agree, but that's why I, I try my goal with it is can I make a post that they don't want to share or at least I think is so funny that it's worth the post. I itself. saw one of yours and I was like, really like, wow, he did this fucking ad. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, damn, you did that ad. Well, I'm getting I'm getting a bidet soon. Uh, the tushy tushy. tushy. I'm getting they a tushy. They turned me down. They turned you down. They offered they me a tushy. They made an offer and then we gave them a number and they were like, no, which oh. was really sad because I love butt stuff so much. I just want the free one. But Tova and I, we're, we're trying to come up with, you know, I, it's got to be funny. It's hard. It's hard. Always. It's part so of me, hard. I thought I was thinking I was going to sit on it. I turn it on and then brown water would come out of my mouth oh my like God, somehow. Jamango. But then, you know. That's a lot to pull off. It's a lot. It's a high concept. Are you doing it in one are shot? You, yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Are you do. somehow sneaking the brown yeah, water? Like I like turn on and I feel kind of good and then like, and then in my mind, 
bro, shoots out of my mouth. Uh, but I'm excited to have a bidet. I'm, I'm probably going to use it. I'm, I probably How at least. How much does a bidet normally cost? Well, the, this is like something you got to attach it. $100. It. Okay. I'm going to have it peg me. Uh, that's what I'm excited. I mean, I'm probably going to try it once, you know, just. Maybe it's uh, less. I don't know. I, the people $69. Like if you have one, you should use it. I don't Chris think there's one. He does? Yeah. Does it, is it, does it get warm? Uh, I don't know. This one, I think, is going to be cold. Cold, cold water bidet. on the, the asshole. Cold I love a bidet because I, I got a big hairy ass. Yeah. I wax. You wax your ass? I go, I got a full Brazilian. Mm. You you don't understand, but you you don't have as much hair. I, I, no, my I don't. ass is covered in in hair. I'm sure it is. I mean, mine is not. The rainforest declining is partially due to me wiping my ass. Oh. I had a roommate bamboo once. Bamboo toilet paper, just uh, for your listeners. What do you mean? I use bamboo toilet paper. How much does bamboo toilet paper cost? Not n- nearly. Where do you as even get it? Is it better for the Amazon? Envi- better for the environment. Okay. Bamboo is oh good. Yeah, I had a roommate. This was the most embarrassed where I've been with a roommate. He was like, "We go through toilet paper pretty fast," and I was like, "I don't know what to tell you, buddy." You should get your asshole wa- waxed. So then it's just like it's they'll be like it's Steve Carell. You know, he had the chest, he had little patches. It would be like a little patch of no hair surrounded by hair. No, like they get no, in, they get the in your thing. asshole. Oof, that sounds very painful. No, it's not. It actually kind of feels nice. The uh, the vagina, like my above my clit, that hurts but not so much anymore but a little bit the asshole feels like i'm getting scratched like a back scratch it's kind of nice how often would you think he would need to go and do every that? five weeks every five weeks all right i'll give it a try maybe that could be a patreon you, yeah I, you should definitely try it for I patreon i feel i don't care what, what a woman does with her body hair ever i do not give a fuck i lo- like i sometimes i really like it so i i don't i have no opinion on no hair but for me I don't like my butt hair. I feel cleaner. I feel like mm-hmm. I can get cleaner. Yeah. 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 I hear you. I, good try getting away from this TED Talk. Uh, oh, but we're back fuck. to it. So you Shit. you went... Was, did you go to NYU? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this talk, though? Was it at NYU? Yeah. Yeah, it was at NYU. Okay, so you were talking about computer science, engineering. Yes. And why are you... Why are you, you should feel proud. I don't. It's very funny because... <laughs> It's it's pre you doing stand up. Yes. And I was like waiting for you to like come out of this kind of like educational and tell like an audience member to go fuck themselves or something like to do some crowd work. But oh. uh, <laughs> I was just like waiting to see like your anger come out or, or something. No, I was like super tame. But you had jokes in it. There were jokes. You had a you had a joke about Larry Page, the Google guy, and it was like, look at Larry Page is with this girl who's way hotter than he is. She you was. should get into computer science. Well, let me tell you something about this. Viral TikTok. I mean, viral TED Talk. (laughs) That's funny. I gave the TED Talk. The team fucking loved it. They wanted it on the main TED website. They were going to convert it into a full TED Talk. The camera, uh, the microphone broke. None of my audio was recorded. The original TED Talk. I got laughs on that fucking TED Talk, bro. I was fucking murdering up there. Then they go, we're going to try and re-record it so we can send it to TED. They get the entire catering staff from the event to sit in the front rows. They zoom in so it looks like it was the original TED Talk. I give the whole TED Talk over again. By the way, I have strep throat. I'm running a fever also in addition to this. Run it again. The audio is still fucked up. They don't have the uh, the audience mic'd. So you can't hear any of the laughter on it. And it's the second time they've heard it. And it's the at, at the end of the day, they're yeah. the catering staff. So that is and yeah. The, if I was the catering staff, I'd be like, "Are you fucking serious?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, that poor th- shout out caterers who came to my TED talk and they didn't want to be there. So that was actually, and I can certify this because I'm still friends with the girl who put put me on this TED talk. That's that is that thing. And in the YouTube comments, there are people like she thinks she's so funny. No one's laughing. And as a comedian, you have no fucking idea how much I hate those comments. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I know you. it's not that funny. It's a TED Talk. I'm not like an arrogant fuck that I think my TED right. Talk is like so wonderful or whatever. But I do hate that the audience is not mic'd and it's like. They a, never. Yeah. yeah. I Absolutely. just got a clip from Flappers Comedy Club. They pulled two clips from a set I did there and they're like, can we post these? And you cannot hear the audience. And I'm like, guys, I, know, I, they don't, I, don't, underst- I don't understand. A lot of times. How is there no audience in here? Yeah. There, there's like. A lot of times people don't know this, but if the audience is not mic'd properly, the sound, the, it sounds like the comedian's bombing and they're not. When they're I take my special, that was my number one concern is mics in the audience. Yep. 
I wanted all the mics. I wanted I wanted every audience member to be mics. mic'd up. Yeah. Every single one. Because my first, I recorded a special once. We never released it. But, like, we put the mic, one of the two mics in the audience was next to a friend of mine who laughed like, ah, ha, ha, yep. And we were like, well, we lost that whole yep. track. I put a mic on the stage and I just face it out. Yeah. That that yeah. does a pretty good because job. Because then, but- then you get to hear what you felt on stage. Yes. And so... We, we we filmed a sketch once and I swear the audio didn't capture the audience laugh and my whole sketch team was like oh really the laughs were louder in person John Marco and yeah. I was like they fucking were you're behind them when you film it it's yep. true um, so so you were a comedian then or no I just started I, I was about a year in and what made you start if because computer science you were working in computer science yeah I was pretty successful I had a fucking TED talk <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, were you making good money? Yeah. Oh my god! And I so, don't know what's wrong with me. What made you want to start comedy? Like, what was the first thing that made I you always go, wanted to do comedy? Were you always funny? Yeah. You were the funny person. I mean, in I'm computer li- science, you, it must not be hard. I was saying, like, in computer science, I feel like I'm dominating this podcast. Not to, I know, like, you guys are great, but I feel like I've really brought a clear perspective yeah. and some pretty good. You know that yeah. almost every I made Ashley a Gavin tweet joke that both of you missed, and it was really good. I, I did miss it. Every Ashley Gavin tweet, she replies to it going, this deserves more. Oh. I mean, every single one. Yeah. Every single one. Uh, it so, helps, actually. It's, it helps? It's a really good, it's like a retweet without retweeting it. Yeah. I just retweet it. And you know what's, oh my God, someone tweeted, and I didn't know them, but they t- tweeted, I wish I had as much confidence as Jamarca Cerezi to retweet all my tweets. And I like, I blocked her. It made me so upset. And then she wrote me an Instagram message apologizing. And I was like, it's okay. I'm just being a baby. It. She probably didn't mean it in a bad way. I know. So. But She's you just know. like nagging you a little bit. You yeah. know what is, one of the things where, especially where you're like being this self-starter, you got to promote a lot. Yeah. And it's, I feel, you feel Dude, sensitive. you fucking hustle. But you feel sensitive if someone's like, hey, you fucking cornball, stop talking about yourself. And you're like, I know. I know, I know. Yeah. It does. It's, I'd it's love like, if it's other like networks f- were talking about me on my yeah, behalf. Yes. It's the fan thing. It's this thing where you're like, I'm just trying to do a job and I know this is part of the job and it feels fucking weird. It feels weird. When did you decide to put away computer science? Um... I acted as a kid. I was in like this theater troupe. I was like did theater throughout everything. And then, uh, you know, I did stand up at my eighth grade talent show. Like This was something I told my father before he died that I wanted to be an actor. Like, like very young. I was 11. So your father, your father died when you were 11. Yes. <laughs> how did, how did he pass cancer, away? Cancer. Oh, fuck. I know. So hack. I, uh, <laughs> it's okay. You can laugh. <laughs> was, um, was it, uh, no. Did you know for a long time that it was coming? Like, were he you- was sick, but like he he didn't see enough doctors, and like he had a stroke the year before, and like what other, kind of cancer? Uh, lung. He smoked. Mm. Uh, he was just like a super unhealthy <laughs> dude. Yeah. Um. Great. I. I mean, I loved him. He was a great dad. But uh, you know, told him like this is what I wanted to do. Like, knew that I was going to do. But then, you know, like you get neurotic and um. I was like, well, maybe I should do something else because of my own problems. I won't get into it. But therapy, uh, I think it's like a very simple, a simplistic interpretation is like, it's not practical, but it was deeper than that. It was like really deep rooted, like trying to hold myself back type of stuff. Uh, and um, sorry, fly. Hey, dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's no one ever says with reincarnation you see that, yeah. that fly yeah. that's your t- <laughs> uh but then i got to mit i was working at mit i had this girlfriend I had wait two- so you you uh where'd you go to college Bryn Mawr Bryn Mawr so you're, you're just also great at school i mean clearly uh, yeah i had problems too but then i got good at school uh-huh and um uh not i'm not a traditional smart person Okay. I like ha- I like hacking. I like figuring out how these things work and yeah. then like um bypassing things and you know. But um burp, 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 I got to MIT super depressed. I had a hot girlfriend, I had a two bedroom apartment, great job, and I was just like fucking depressed and, and what were you doing at MIT? This was a pro uh, Oh, I was um I worked at a national security research lab. Now it gets really fucking annoying. I oh. robots. No, I'm fascinated. Yeah, I know, I know. Everyone's like, Why don't you talk about this on stage? And I'm like, I just think it's so fucking stupid but yeah. everyone else is like what yeah i worked for like the government i made not weapons but i made uh, i worked in a biochem defense 
group. We worked on projects that I'm like not supposed to talk about. Um, and they're Did you, really were you, fucking boring. Were you proud of the work? Or, or yeah, was it? it was super. Everyone, dude, the comparison between people being like, wow, MIT, that must have been really hard. And I'm like, no, you know what's fucking hard? Being a comedian. <laughs> yeah. MIT is a fucking Thinking joke. Thinking of a funny tweet you, every day. You That's think, tough. You think that those people are smart? They're not fucking smart. They just learned how to do this thing. Computer science, just no one wants to do it. Literally, <laughs> no one wants to do it. It is not that hard. Yeah. It is not. Basic computer science, which is like 90% of computer science jobs are just like, if you took intro to computing, that's half of it. That's uh-huh. like half of what you need to know. And then you like a couple other classes. You you really only need like a boot camp, like a one year boot camp. Anyone could do this job. But everyone was like, Wow, you must be such a genius. And I was like, No, I'm emotionally tortured and like a very regular it, I'm not great at computer science. I mean, whatever. I don't care. But You must be. I'm fine. I'm fine at computer science, but I'm not I was never one of those you know, when this is so such a deep cut, but like when you take computer science classes, there is there are multiple solutions to a problem. Uh-huh. And there is a best way with like there is some sort of creative problem solving wiggle room. But there is usually what they call the elegant solution, which is like the simplest and the most efficient. I never found that solution. I just it's very similar to the way I do comedy. Yeah. I was like, I can't figure this fucking out. Hollywood won't let me do it. So let me go this way, which is not efficient and much worse, yeah. but I'm still going to get there. I'm still going to like reach the, yeah. So what was the transition like from doing that to like, was there a moment where you're like, oh, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do comedy full time. Like, I, I were started, you doing like. Yeah, I was, start, I was writing a musical with my friend and we ended up having a falling out. He's a douche. He has a falling out musical? with anyone. Um, I think I was calling it MeTube at the time. I'm sorry. It, me, me tube. It was pre me too. <laughs> <laughs> when the me too movement starts, you're like, we got to change we this title. We got to change this title. No, it was a play on YouTube. Oh, it was about too. like a, it was about social media. It's sort of like. I wrote, you know, I wrote a social media play too. I just feel like a lot of people wrote a social media play. In like 2012. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. A That's exactly. It, mine was called Fookbook, Facebook without the vowels. <laughs> and it was just about, you know, someone getting wrapped up in social media. Yeah, I was writing Thank this God. And, it almost went to the fringe and I was like, thank and God. And then Dear Evan Hansen had, I guess, was the best one. But, um, and very You know, sad. originally it, it was, it was called Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Okay, just to be clear, it was not me too. It was me too, <laughs> me too. Anyway, yeah, and I was writing this musical with my friend, and he we ended up having a falling out, and so when that happened, I was like, okay, well, I quit my job. I'm living with my mother. I might as well go do UCB. So I started doing UCB, and then it, that was not happening fast enough. So then I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna try stand up, and then I tried stand up, and I was like, this is the this is the thing, and then mm. I just like focused on stand up. But you, at some point, did you leave a job? Yeah, I, I told them, I'd, I said to them, I was like, hello, MIT. I would like a leave of absence for a year. And in a year, I would like my job back. And they were just like, sure. Oh, okay. Because it's a great, no one can code. So it's going to be hard to replace me. I'm also well, uh, probably, they, I don't know if this mattered, but I'm a woman and I was good. I was good at my job. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, they, and then they called me and I remember just being on the phone. <laughs> And then being like, yep, we have some really cool stuff going on with sensors, some cool sensor projects. <laughs> and I just remember being like, oh, my God, I, there is literally no way I'm ever doing this again. Yeah. This is so boring and stupid. Are you kidding me? Um, and and they're great. Shout, 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 out, out. <laughs> shout out Lincoln Lab, Lincoln Lab group. What group was I in? 45? I don't remember. Uh, was there a financial difference in what your life look like suddenly i got a job i was living with my mom so that was huge so i didn't have rent and i got a job for about the same amount of money at girls who code where i wrote the whole curriculum and that's how i got the ted talk because it was about education girls who code is a program what is girls who code um it's a very po- a lot of people know it um you're just you know not very yeah, woke yeah, yeah. Of um course not. but <laughs> it was huge in 2012 so much buzz in 2012 uh-huh. now not as much yeah, that was teaching. They, they it's in a, it's a, like a program where they teach girls how to code. But then you did that. And eventually, you stopped that too. Yeah, it's just I just feel like you had jobs that must have paid well, and then stand up and mattered, so and were like intellectually stimulating. 
And anyone would be so lucky to have those jobs. I've been like hugely privileged throughout my entire life and I keep throwing it all away. Tell me, is there any downside of trying to teach, trying to get more women into what is coding? Yeah. Like, is there, is there, um, the what do you think? The downside is that you're leading them towards a career where they're definitely going to get sexually harassed. In coding, really? Yeah, it's, it's not a pleasant, the problem with computer science is, look, eventually you get to a management job, but it is, you're trying to tell these young women, you're like, no, it's not just totally in a basement all day by yourself writing code. But actually those first couple of years, depending on what you're doing, there is a lot of time alone writing code mm. yeah and to get to a higher level where you're doing some really intellectually stimulating stuff and working with other people and maybe managing people you kind of have to get through that and the people around you can really suck and the other side of it is the way we teach computer science oh my god fuck me please this is the i want to know <laughs> Give it. okay so the the other side of it is that we the the people that you're working with do not have liberal art education they just have engineering and they have Traditionally, the pipeline, they tend to be antisocial. They tend to, you know, like um, not have great interpersonal skills. They tend to have never spoken to a woman in their entire lives. And I'm really not trying to shit on these people. I think we need to reform the entire thing so that these people have to take an English class or have to take some sort of seminar. But then that young woman that I'm teaching goes in and is on a team with those nine dudes. And it's just her. And I put her there. Uh you know, like yeah. she's gonna, it's gonna suck. And we try to create environments where they can, you know, keep in touch with each other and have a support group. And I, I, I give my phone number to all my students or I gave my phone number to all my students. You know, sometimes I get texts from them now, like, hey, this happened or whatever. I haven't talked to you in 10 years, but like here, this is what's going on. And, and so I'm there for them, but like it really sucks, man. Yeah. Like it sucks. It's not, it can be a not fun job and everyone's trying to make it fun because we desperately, desperately need them. It's a huge problem. We're getting hacked every day. We're, our, yeah. All our, I mean, it's happening. I knew this was gonna happen when I was in college. We talked about it, you know, but, but now it's actually happening and we don't have anyone. It's a national security problem. We're gonna, we're all gonna die. You, you feel that America's more unprepared than other countries? I don't know where other countries are at, but I do know that like, if we just need more, we just need more, tech savvy individuals yeah. i think it's so interesting because in the news we always hear about like north korea hacked us or russia hacked us and i'm like well we're, we're definitely them. hacking the we're fuck hacking out them of them too, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah we For definitely sure. have some good coders here what's the percentage of, of women in computer science professionally in the 80s it was like 37 percent, and then it fell down to like 20 really it fell down yeah, after yeah, yeah. the 80s because at some at some point it became a gendered activity. I think it might've been around in com personal computing sales and like video game sales mm. started going to marketing, Lego started going towards boys. Uh. But pre-capitalism computing, computing was a very female actually driven career because in during World War II, yo, I'm like a fucking wealth of knowledge. Wow. During <laughs> World War II, uh, all the women were doing the math and the computing on the mm. first computers that ever, the ENIAC at uh, uh, University of Pennsylvania. Women were coding. The, the first programming language was, I believe, written. One of the first coding languages was written by Grace Hopper, who was like a naval admiral or something. She was like super cool lady, probably gay. Do you think it's going in the right direction now? I mean, I feel I like... I don't fucking know. Like video... I feel like video games... I, I just auditioned for something that involved esports. So I watched a bunch of esports documentaries. Sure. And it was they interesting. Had the hot girl with the glasses on and her tits pushed yeah. up. And she's like, you know, t doing the... I have auditioned for that stuff. And I was like, they're not going to give this to me. I don't look like a suck dick. That's what the... They want the girls that look like they suck. They, I want to suck a gamer's dick. I want that. You like sit in your basement and compete on Call of Duty. I fuck, want to fuck you. Is co women in coding? Is there uh, a more gay women in it? Would you say or I don't know. Yeah, probably. Probably because any gendered field, it seems like gay women have an easier time existing in those spaces than straight women. And why? Why? Probably because we can more easily remove ourselves from those women. Have to like meet men and like date them. Mm. Yeah, and and men, I think treat them. I think men treat me differently than straight women, and I very much enjoy that. Yeah, I feel like I've, I've, 
in some I'm also tall and I have a deep voice and I have brown hair <laughs> and thick eyebrows. That super no, it super helps. I used to have a writing partner who's like petite and blonde and like people wouldn't make eye contact with her in our general meetings. Wow. And I would like have to keep being like her. Yeah. Yeah. It was rough. I also had like slightly more clout, which made it even harder. Yeah. 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 Um, before we go to this has got to stop, I do want to, I would like to you to tell the story again of why you got banned from TikTok the first oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because first of all, I don't know how you, you're not banned again. You talk about some crazy shit on your TikToks that I would be so scared. I have some jokes that I'm scared to put up on TikTok because really? they take down shit if it's too sexual. Sexual yeah. seems to be the number one yeah. thing to be worried about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why did you get banned the first time? Uh, panda porn. Mm -hmm. You posted panda. Like, no, pens. I was on a live and someone was like, panda porn is a thing. And I was like, what's panda porn? And I thought I was going to a website where pandas would be having sex. And I was not showing this on the live. I was just audio narrating. Turns out panda porn is actually when people dress up as pandas and fuck each other to raise money oh. for panda cons conservance, cons cons saving the wildlife. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conservatorship. Yeah, thank you. Brittany. People that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brittany is actually a panda, and that's the whole thing. They dress up like pandas, and they have real sex. They have real sex. It's but like it's a porn. It's cause. like a porn hub thing. It's like it was like a it was like a campaign panda porn. Yeah. And then I was playing it, and no sex had actually happened. But I guess somewhere I said something stupid, and my they just fucking shut that shit down immediately. How long were you? Not very long because he started to take his dick out, and I was like, no more, and I turned it off. Oh, okay. So it was really, it was pre-panda porn. It was like, oh, you're a daddy bear. Oh, they were talking too. Yeah. They, they were really, talking. yeah. They really uh, extrapolated off the panda. When he took the dick out, was there was it a, z a zipper? I didn't. I didn't they, they heard the zipper. That's what it, they heard the zipper. You hear a zipper on like, TikTok. It's just hair. like they've they've done an analysis. They can hear any zipper on any live, and if a zipper goes, <laughs> I was think it's funny because pandas mostly in China. That's like where like the where we get our pandas from. Yep, we import our pandas from China. And I think maybe 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 it was that. We need like TikTok. American made pandas. <laughs> the people in China were like, Don't don't fuck with pandas. <laughs> we're making a lot of money exporting these pandas. We do not Yeah. Um all right. Well now we're gonna go to uh This has gotta stop. This has gotta stop. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're giving a look like No, I he just Sorry, I hurt my ears. I read the ears. email, John Marco. Thank you. I what does your producer it. even do if she's not here pushing the buttons? Well, she'll appreciate this if she listened. Um, no, I have, I have, it's a producing team, Fawn. She, 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 books. Bo she books. She books, which is, and schedules, which is a big part yeah, of I it. I know, I have one. I too. have another producer, Paige. She helps with, with uh, the captions and the things. I need to get, I'm wow, trying to get more I do and more. All that. I'm trying to get more and more things off my plate because it's fucking nuts. For sure. Nuts. I have an editor this now. This is fucking nuts. Yeah, I need an editor. But then I want to do the clips myself. I, I really. I do the clips. Yeah. Do you need an editor? Uh, my possibly. editor is fantastic. Oh, I'll reach out. First, first I'm going to ask Paige what she wants to do, my my first person. But then after that, sure. No, fuck Paige. Oh, Paige. Paige is I'm so lot. sorry. Paige is a Paige, wonderful- Paige, women in tech. Women in tech. <laughs> um, so uh, this has got to stop, uh, where we talk about something that's just got to stop in society, humanity, oh, our I forgot own to prepare one. Okay. Um, do you People have, have got to stop asking me about my fucking TED Talk. That's got to stop. That's that's almost too specific, I would okay. say, for this has got to stop. <laughs> no one's going to relate to that. I don't know. Um, uh, with something that's got to stop. I, I've had some couple things that I keep forgetting about in the moment. You, you have, have anything? No, because I, th I didn't know we were I know. doing this today. I just figure you have one on the way. Um, we're going to. I have a gay one. Please. It, it happened to me yesterday, but it happens all the time. But yesterday, it was like the most extreme instance. Mm. And I, I'm worried that this person is going to listen, but it's so unlikely. I'm doing a show. The comedian asked me the headline. She's going to be recording some of her. She's featuring. She's recording. And she asked me when I tour, because like I'm headlining this, she was like, what are your audiences like? And I was like, why? Why are you asking me this? As if the butts in the seat, their sexual orientation matters. Yeah. What are you worried about? I never like get to pick. My entire career, I have been performing for straight people. All of them. All of them straight. And even gay people are like, you must hate it when straight people come to your show. No, because I write the jokes so that they are funny. 
Yeah. They're just yeah. funny jokes. Doesn't matter who's there. Why do you care? Why yeah. do you care if I have a big gay following? What it, It's so diminishing to be mm. like, well, <laughs> they're not real people. They're gay people. Right. It, it's just so fucking. What do you care that they? It's the same twenty dollars. It's the same. They're gonna laugh the same. They're human beings. To be fair, the way she asked about it was sort of like, I I kind of felt fear in her. I was like, Are you worried that they're not gonna laugh the same way straight people laugh? Are you worried that your recording's not gonna? What? Why are you asking me this? And of course, I took the gig because she's paying me. But like, y- you know, it. Stop! Stop! Yeah. Why do you care? Yeah, do I I don't. I must, this must happen to um, non-white comedians as well. I would imagine. Yeah, but like, it's just it. It's really diminishing to make it seem like well, you only have them because. Is there a stereotype? Yeah. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a stereotype of of lesbians not having? I will a say great sense of humor. I will say, <laughs> they can be a tough crowd, but. <laughs> <laughs> Having oh said all that, they God. do not laugh. No. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, but if that's what it is, I wish, I just wish you would say it. Right. Like, hey, I know this sucks. Sometimes lesbians can be a little tight. And I would be like, you're damn right they can. But butts and seats are butts and seats. And it's your fucking job to make people laugh at the end of the day. If you are a comedian, that is your job, no matter who is in yeah. that crowd. And it's strange that that we, for whatever reason, it's, I haven't put my finger on it, but I just wish people would stop asking me what the demographic of my crowd is. I, at literally all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, this, it's, there's a thinking that you're going to be able to game. There's randomness with crowds. Crowd might not be into you. Crowd might not dig whatever you're talking about. Any crowd might do it. So in, in this moment, you like think you're like, okay, I think I know I can know something about this crowd. They're going to be uh, lesbians. So you're like, oh, let me try to game it. And it's like you, sure, could get, sure. you could get lesbians that love you, you get lesbians that hate you, the same way with uh, any kind of crowd. But you're trying to game it, and ultimately you are making assumptions yeah. in your attempt to like game the system. Well, you're on stage. You're doing a 15-minute set. Okay, yeah, put your like couple lesbian quips up first. But if you're a good comic, that's not going to – the whole thing is not going to, if you're a bad comic, lesbian quips up first, you're still not going to be able to kill the, for the full 15. Even if you have your funny little lesbian joke first, because they are human beings. I don't like yeah. it when it's like diminishing of what, I, what I've accomplished. Yeah, I agree. You've accomplished a great deal. Yeah, I fucking yeah. have. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's go on to. You better count your blessings. Who did you get to do this for you? Uh, Douglas Goodhart. Douglas Goodhart. 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 Our sketch team, a wonderful musician and comedian and writer. Wow. Uh, do you have music for your podcast? I got it on premiumbeat.com and I oh, pay yeah. for it. Premium How does it go? Beats. Um, <laughs> How much did you pay for that? <laughs> Zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's it actually... It's actually me. That's what it is. <laughs> you, you, you could do, uh, get a theme song now. Your, your podcast is doing tremendously. Thank you. That's really nice. I, I could. And then, how I, much did you pay for yours, John Marco? I offered. Exactly. Doug, I offered Douglas money. He said no. Uh, I think you, we're we're having gay sex. Nah, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. <laughs> pitching, you're pitching. I, yeah, yourself. can I do it, please? I need some money right now. Um, uh, Russell, do you have a blessing? I do. Rounding out. Um, uh, end of an era. Um, my blessing, BJ, the DJ, our neighbor Barbara moved out of our building. We've lived with her. For, she's been there five years. Good friend. Takes care of our cat. To oh. waters our plants. Oh. Just a great, great neighbor. And on our way out, she, uh, our couch had been kind of run down, and she had a new couch she didn't need in a new place. So we got a new couch. Oh. Has a queen pull-out sofa. It's cha- it's so my I, I I feel like every other blessing I do on this is is Barbara, but uh but I love Barbara and um and I'm thankful and I'm I'm sad that she's gonna be not living in our building anymore. Bj the DJ. Bj the DJ. Come on an episode yeah. sometime. She's a DJ. No, but she's she's a, she's lived in New York her whole life. Like she so she's had many lives, and uh she was a DJ for a while. Um, okay, but like. 
Uh, she was also Once stewardess. Once a DJ, always a DJ. She was a stewardess on Trump Airlines. <gasps> she was like, she's just had every job and every, she's wild story. Did New she York ever stories. talk to Trump? Yeah, she met him a few times. She used to play on the softball league, the Trump softball league. And um, he, it was Marla Maples was on the team and he would like come and like see, see the team. It was like while he was having an affair with Marla Maples and she, Barbara was on the team. <laughs> It's just, it's just you know, so I, as, as like we like grow like a following. There is sometimes I'm like Trump did it really well. Like oh, talk about someone who hustles. Is, I mean, like baseball team. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, no, it's like weird because yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I mean, it's weird because you're like, okay, well, if you were given 141 million dollars or whatever the fuck he yeah, got, yeah. you might be able to build your brand because he did spend, sorry, all of it. To build the brand. So you're like, okay, yeah, he did. Like, in some ways, I'm like, yeah, he did a really good job with the branding. But then he also had that huge Every, fund to, yeah. like, start the brand. Yeah. But but when the people are like, invest in yourself, really, I'm like, that's what It Trump really did. is he just did, the, the idea that you watch any sitcom from the 80s, 90s, and he's the name that they give as wealth. And yeah. he wasn't the wealthiest person. But, like, yeah. that was the, got into our psyche as yes. being, like, Donald Trump is rich. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Anyways, well, BJ the DJ, we're a big fan of you. I, yes. I met you once at your you party. You did, yeah. She, yeah. she was she on brought birthday seafood party. stuff. She was great. She brought, yeah, she did. She's the best. BJ the DJ. I uh, will say um, I'm thankful. Uh, some comics have said very nice things to me leading up to Comedy Central, but the other thing they did, they uh, they gave me a lot of little spots this week. I, oh. I asked for as many times to run this set, and I asked for so many yesterday. I. I missed a couple in the calendar. I'm usually very good about that, but I think I've been so chaotic. I think I had like eight shows yesterday. I made wow, five of them. Wow. And the three That's... that I missed, you know, I'm on some of the flyers that yeah. I, I missed and I wrote Damn. them and I said, I'm sorry. And they were like, totally cool. We get it. And I think when you book someone, at least for me, when I'm booking someone in, in that position, I know there's a chance they're not going to make it. Yeah. And, but they were very sweet. I'm just saying, like, you know, people, you, you can be shitty about it. And, and you're, you, 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 it makes sense. Yeah. I said I was going to do your show. I didn't make it. But they were all cool. No one gave me shit. Uh, and uh, it's it's the comedy community. We all are very competitive, but there's moments that we can be nice to each other. And I think we, we understand how hard it is for everyone doing this. And I think sometimes you can feel a sense of camaraderie occasionally which feels nice now and then um you've always been very nice to me i from from oh, the that's, beginning that's, no, you have. i'm glad you feel that way yeah, yeah yeah um and do you have a blessing ashley gavin yeah i'm um, being a huge slut right now and um really pulling praise god uh i am sleeping with this one girl and she's just really cool mm. she's just like very emotionally stable totally i've been through a breakup um, like was like, it's casual. I have a podcast that I talk about the women that I'm sleeping with. And she is just always cool to like chat, laugh, come over, That's do whatever. If there's sex, there's sex. If there's not, there's not. Like she's just so cool. And it's great That's to have awesome. someone like that with no emotional strings attached. Yeah. It's gonna gotta implode at some point, but right now, <laughs> yeah, I'm so grateful for musical theater girl, as yeah. she's known on my podcast. What's, I was gonna ask what's girl. her full name, but uh, yeah, <laughs> musical first theater. Uh, BJ the DJ. Yeah, <laughs> BJ the DJ. Oh my god, <laughs> she plays um, softball. Well, uh, as as Ashley pointed out, even when relationships are good and fun, eventually they all something happens and oh, yeah. expectations don't match, and they wither and they die. And ultimately, when you take your final breath, you are alone. This is the downside. One, two.